Hello, we are Honey Fingers and Friends, and today we will show you four flowers that you can grow at home that will nourish bees in four ways. In this workshop, we're hoping to demonstrate to you that by doing these simple things, you help not just the honeybees, but a wide range of animals that all benefit from pollination. Buzz pollinators, who help us with our tomatoes, honeybees, who help us with sunflowers, all sorts of pollinators who feed off rosemary, and finally, we'd like to talk about the native plants and insects that live in the landscape where you live and how important it is to help these pollinators in this age. Rosemary is a wonderful plant to plant at home because it's very hardy, flowers for a long time, the bees love it, and it's delicious in the kitchen. Today, Sam and Elsa are potting out some rosemary tubers. We would like you to start to think about bees as being little cooks in their kitchen, like humans are cooks in their kitchen. Think of honey as being nectar jam made by bees. When humans have too much fruit, we make jam. We boil down the fruits to increase the sugar content and decrease the water content. We then fill up a sterilized vessel and put a lid on it. Bees bring the nectar back into the hive, store it in honeycomb cells, and fan their wings over their cells to reduce the water content to below approximately 18%. Then, when it is fully cured, they cap that cell with a wax lid Beekeepers call this capped honey, and essentially it's like putting a lid on a jar of jam. Honey is nectar jam made by bees, and honeybees are excellent cooks. And sunflowers provide pollen to bees in high summer. The bees get the pollen over their little bodies and as they groom themselves, they push all the little pollen granules down to their hind legs and carry them in balls there. Beekeepers sometimes call these pollen pants. Pollen is very important for the beehive because it is the source of protein and fats and vitamins and minerals and amino acids that are required for baby bees. When people think about bees, they usually think about bees collecting nectar to make honey, but that's only one of the important food groups for bees inside the hive. The other food bees collect in the field is pollen, and sunflowers are an excellent source of pollen for honeybees. They bring that pollen back into the hive and they ferment it using a lactic acid fermentation, which is the same fermentation process that we use to create a sourdough starter for bread. Perhaps this is why beekeepers call fermented pollen made by bees, bee bread. Bees do it for the same reason that we ferment foods. We can control the decay rate of the food. We can extend the life of the food by fermenting it. Although the Western honeybee can be found on every continent except Antarctica, the species is not indigenous to all continents. Honeybees are believed to have originated in Africa or Asia and spread naturally through Africa, the Middle East and Europe. Humans introduce the species to the Americas, Australia, and much of Asia. We now keep these bees in such great numbers that this has become an issue we need to manage. Honeybees are very efficient foragers and, especially in landscapes where they have been introduced, they can outcompete indigenous pollinators for nectar and pollen. 
Even in cities where honeybees are indigenous, beekeepers can keep them in such great numbers that they put extreme pressure on food supplies. However, we can all help with this issue, even from home. By researching what flowers and pollinators are indigenous to your landscape, you can help native pollinators by planting the food they eat. This wax flower has a very simple structure and essentially has a cup of nectar in the flower that is easily accessible by both indigenous bees and European honeybees. Sometimes the flowers have evolved specifically to be pollinated by a native bee or insect and only that species can feed on it. These flowers, called kangaroo paw, are native to southwest Australia but are now distributed across much of the country. It provides nectar for both bees and birds. However, it is birds, such as the honey eater and honey possum, that benefit most from this flower. This is the wonderful thing about planting for bees. By doing so, you are helping both bees, other pollinating insects, and birds. By helping bees, you are also connecting your gardening activities at home to a wider ecology and food web of both indigenous and non-indigenous species. Tomatoes are not pollinated by honeybees. They require buzz pollinators. The pollen in some flowers, like tomatoes and potatoes, needs to be shaken free. Honeybees can't do this. The bees that do this are called buzz pollinators. In plants that require buzz pollination, the anthers are tubular and the pollen is more or less inside that tube. As such, honeybees cannot gather it. The pollen inside the tube needs to be released by the wind or by insects called buzz pollinators. In order to release the pollen, these buzz pollinators grab onto the flower and move their flight muscles rapidly, causing the flower and the anthers to vibrate, dislodging the pollen. About 9% of the flowers of the world are primarily pollinated using buzz pollination, including many of the foods that we eat. A wonderful Australian example of the buzz pollinator is the blue banded bee. We hope that we have demonstrated to you that by planting bee-friendly flowers, you are not only nourishing honeybees, but you are nourishing other pollinators, birds and insects, mammals and marsupials that live in your ecology and are part of your food web. And we hope that we've demonstrated that there are many types of pollinators that we benefit from with our own food security. And mostly, we hope that by nourishing the bees, you are nourishing yourselves at home. <laughs>